All right, welcome to this second lecture series of arable crop production. And today we'll be looking at cowpea production. Cowpea is known as the Vigna of Gilgulata, well, the scientific name. Cowpea, commonly called bean, is indigenous to West Africa. It is an important item in the diet of West Africans. It provides valuable protein and the leaves are used as nutritious vegetable. It is eaten in various ways, either alone or mixed with maize, rice, fish, or bean flour. It's made into fried cake or boiled cake called moi moi. Cow peas are sometimes grown as cover crops. As a leguminous plant, it is valuable for improving soil fertility. It plays an important part in crop rotation and can be dug into the soil while it is green. This part means that it's used for improving soil and reaching the soil quality, whereby cowpea, which is able to fix nitrogen, helps to return nitrogen to the soil and also can help in, uh, to be used as green manure when you recycle it back into the soil after a cropping season or prior to a new cropping season. Legume widely adapted is a legume widely adapted and grown throughout the world. However, Africa predominates in its production. The major producers of cowpea in Nigeria are the states of Borno, Zamfara, and Kaduna states. This is a distribution, the uh, production distribution of cowpea around the world. We have Africa having the highest production capacity of uh, 68%, and the rest of the world having 10, 3, 2, and 17% respectively. This is a cowpea plant. You have a trifoliate and alternate arrangement leaves. You have the pods. You have the dry one and the fresh one, the colors differ. You have the flower, which is most times yellow or purplish. Okay, you have the roots and the nodules on the roots, which helps to fix nitrogens in the soil. These are the ways cowpea can be used in preparing food. It's used to make a bean cake, also known as akara. We have the moi moi, we have other mixtures. We have them used in combination with bread as a breakfast snack, and so on and so forth. Can be used to make oil as well. The length of growing season varies with the type of cowpea. 100 days in determinate type and 110 days in semi-determinate. Semi-determinants, we have the determinate and the indeterminate. So the determinate types are um, different from the indeterminate. The semi-determinate are those that share the similarities, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> similarities of determinate and indeterminate. The climate will also have an effect on the length of the growing season. The hotter the weather, the shorter the maturity period. Cowpea grows best on fertile, loamy soils with a rainfall of 760 to 1520 millimeters during the growing months. It grows best in the dry areas of the northern parts of West Africa. They say, the thing about these climate differences is that when the weather is more hot, the time for it to attain a production stage is faster because there's enough, enough sunshine for it to produce enough assimilate required to trigger. Uh, reproductive stage of growth and then subsequently attaining harvest maturity faster because it's, the pods tend to get grow faster and mature faster metabolic rate is increased as well you know so but when this weather is uh, cooler or you have prolonged uh, rainfall or increased cloudy skies day cloudy skies the rate of maturity will be slowed down because the amount of assimilate that can be attained within a day that is filled with clouds it's reduced and prolonging the days it will take to attain flowering so that's why we say that the climate also have an effect on the length of growing season if the climate is hotter the plants tend to attain maturity faster when the climate is cooler the plants tend to attain maturity longer many varieties are grown in west africa fruits are pods that vary in size shape color and texture they may be erect, crescent-shaped, or coiled, which can either be white, black, brown, or variously mottled, or in their plant form, which is either dwarf, prostrate, clip creeping, or climbing. In Nigeria, the recommended varieties are Mala, Nigerian 67, Ayi, Kwara, Alabama, Black Eye, 
Prima, Farin Judasi, Kudi, and Dina, while black eyed cream seeded varieties is recommended in Ghana. A new copy variety known as the Ife Brown was released by the Institute of Agricultural Research and Training of Bafumi Awolowo University, Eleife. This variety flowers in 35 days after planting, is erect and day neutral. Day neutral in the sense that it doesn't require any certain amount of sunshine or daylight in order to attain maturity, in order to attain flowering and then maturity. It can attain maturity and flowering irrespective of the day length or the sh a short duration uh, sunshine, it can attain maturity. It's not responsive to the differences in short line, uh, day lengths. Yeah, it is acceptable to consumers because of its brown wrinkled seed coat. Yeah, the brown nature makes people more, uh, it makes it more appealing to people who go to the market to buy it, <coughs> and there it moves faster in the market. So for me, I, I prefer it than the white one because I enjoy it most. You know, so also others who also enjoy it most. The growth forms vary and maybe erect. And that is generally cowpea. Now we're talking about general cowpea, not just if a brown. The growth forms varies and maybe erect, maybe trailing, maybe climbing or bushy, usually in determinate under favorable conditions. Leaves are alternate, trifoliate, usually dark green. The first pair of them is simple and opposite. Okay, stems are straight, smooth or slightly airy, sometimes tinged with purple. Flowers are self-pollinating and may be white, dirty yellow, pink, pale blue or purple in color. They are arranged in racim or intermediate inflorescence in alternate pairs. Flowers open in the early day and close at approximately midday. After blooming, they wilt and collapse. Seeds vary considerably in size, shape, and color. They are relatively large, 2 to 12 millimeters long, and weigh 5 to 30 gram per 100 seeds. Seed shape could be uniform or globular. The tester, the coat, that is the coat covering the grain, may be smooth or wrinkled. White, green, red, brown, black, speckled, blushed, eyed. You know it. The helium central line is white surrounded by a dark ring. That's what I mean by hide. Or mottled in color. This is an example of a cowpea grain. As you can see, this is a brown. The Ife brown, which we're talking about. We have the different white varieties. We have the ones that are called iron beans. Iron beans. Some of you have eaten it before. Iron beans. Yes, you have it mostly in the market in Nigeria. Iron beans. Okay? There are other ones as well which you will get to see later on. Uh, the chemical composition of cowpea. Uh, we have the carbohydrate um, for seeds. We have about 56 to 66 percent. All right? We have no carbohydrate in the air. That means the leaves. And the... Uh, not the leaves. The... The what is used to feed the animals, yeah. The, the leaves we have about eight percent of carbohydrates in them. For protein, we have about 22 to 24 percent, right? We have uh, 4.7 percent in leaves. For water, we have about 11 percent. For air, we have 18 percent of carbohydrate, we have about 85 percent in leaves, uh, crude fiber, and so on. So, these are the um, chemical composition of cowpea in the various. Uh, divisions of the plant. Cultivation. Seeds are sown as a single crop in July to August in northern areas and in September in the south. They can be interplanted with yams, maize, sorghum and other crops. Now we have intercropping whereby maize is used to intercrop with other plants. You know, in certain cases where people do not want to have the chemical fertilizers, they tend to use maize as a source of natural fertilizer to fertilize the soil with the fixation capability of the, um, the cowpea. You know, three seeds are planted in holes 4 cm deep. The seeds may be drilled in rows 75 to 60 cm apart or 25 to 30 cm apart along the rows, depending on whether it is so cropping or intercropping. In areas such as Kaba province of Nigeria, where two crops are grown annually, the first crop is planted from March to April. Germination occurs four to five days after planting. Beans mature two to four months after planting. Weeding is done at least twice before the crop covers the ground. 
care being taken not to damage the vines. This explains why hand weeding may be preferred to be used of a hole with a hole in a weed remover. Yeah, uh, in order not to damage the vines, it's advised that you use manual weeding instead of mechanical weeding because the tendency of you damaging the vines when using mechanical weeding is higher. Herbicides such as pendimental at the rate of 40 to 50 mill milliliters per 4 liter of water can also be applied. Most local bean varieties have long flowering periods and are subject to insect attack all the time. The long flowering period is an advantage since farmers are able to obtain a crop from the few pods set. But for this attribute of the local varieties, the beans may not have set any pods in view of the continuous attack by insects. The beans are harvested when their pods turn yellow, but before they shatter. This happens between December and January in the south, and in November and December in the north. The beans are usually unpicked. Threshing is done by putting the dry pods in sacks, which are beaten with sticks. The seeds are winnowed. Winnowed means they are uh, removed from the pods, and stones are also removed from them as well as other foreign materials. On a few mechanized farms, the beans are first cut with a bean cutter and later threshed with a hauler, thresher or combine. Now the thing is, in this aspect, the threshing process is to remove the bean from the husk, okay, after they've been cut into different bits. They must be in dry form as well before you carry out this exercise. The fertilization. In savanna zones, it's advisable to use 50 to 100 kg per hectare of single superphosphate depending on the level of P deficiency or 100 kg per hectare of NPK 15-15-15. If you're not too sure, you can use the NPK uh, recommendation. In the forest zones, it's advisable to use 50 kg per hectare of one of single superphosphate on land under continuous cropping. Remember the term, continuous cropping. Broadcast the fertilizer and allow it to allow it before planting you know cowpea produces its own nitrogen so what is expected to add is um phosphorus you know because phosphorus is not produced by cowpea and that's why you're seeing the more concern about the phosphorus or alternatively you can apply 150 kilogram per hectare of npk in the same way yield yields are low because of serious serious pest attacks if cowpeas are grown as a sole crop we have about 700 to 1,000 kg per hectare are obtained. Whilst yields of 168 to 448 kg are obtained when the cowpeas are interplanted with other crops. Seed yield may be increased to 1,680 to 2,240 kg per hectare by the proper timing of insecticide application. Because of the pest issue, all right? If you want, you can have an increased um, yield production but you use um, insecticides such as cypermetrin during the flowering and potting phases of production. Storage. The seeds are dried properly to 10 to 12 percent moisture content. A properly dried seed makes a cracking sound when crushed with the teeth. Prior to storage, we you fumigate with gas to sing in airtight containers or bags. While in storage in airtight containers such as drums, tins, or clay pots, double or triple polythene bags, periodical checking of seeds is necessary. Fumigate with foxtocin at the rate of one tablet per 100 kg. This will protect the seeds from broccoli damage during storage. Do not keep fumigated cowpea seeds in the sleeping room or a close to living quarters. Fumigated seeds should be exposed to open air for two to three days before processing for consumption. This is to enable you reduce any effect on humans you know you that is applying the fumigate fumi uh, the chemical you must ensure you protect yourself from inhaling it you must also keep it away from people not to go and inhale the chemicals that will be sprayed around it on it and also you're expected to wash it thoroughly before you start eating it okay so pest cowpeas provide food for very 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 many types of insects all parts of the plants being susceptible to attack. The most important pests can be divided into three groups. One, those which attack the beans before flowering occurs, e.g. pre-flowering pests, 
those attacking or after flowering and those attacking cowpeas at harvest time and in storage please take note of these differences in terms of the pest of cowpea it's important you note it down very very important insect pests of cowpea can be controlled with application of cypermetrin at 200 ml per 10 liters of water i've mentioned that chemical before so always take note of this information one of the examples of the pests that attack them are the beetles. They say there are many beetles or bean weevils fed feed on the leaves and pods, thereby causing poor growth and low yields. They attack beans in the field and in the store. Take note, they attack them in the field and in the store. It is estimated that one weevil larva causes about 5% loss in weight of an infested bean. Field control is difficult, but storage losses can be prevented by dusting the beans with insecticides such as phosphorescent. The beetles can be divided into the following groups. Those attacking the plant before flowering. Oteca motibilis, acidotes, leucogramus. Oteca is a leaf-eating beetle which defoliates the bean plant before flowering occurs, thereby re leading to reduced yields. This beetle is also the vector of the cowpea yellow mosaic virus. Okay? While leucogramus may cause stem breaking at points where the stems are gathered. The larva also bore into stems, causing stunted growth with consequent, redu consequent reduction in yield. I made a very clear example of this while doing this in the classroom. I told, I showed you how it can bore into the stem and break the stem. Those which attack the flower buds and flowers are such as Ma Maruca testulalitis, tenotrip species. The maruca damages flowers. The larva bore into young flowers, feed within, and cause the flowers to drop. Later, insta larva bore into newly formed pods and feed on the seeds. Like in instances where the flower was able to produce a seed, then those pods, those pods are fed upon by the later insta of maruca. Those that attack the pod production phase, uh, such as the anoplomenemis covipis, the acanthomia and the cuddly moth Laspericia species, Piezotreculus verium, is a coleoptera which damages cowpea seed inside buds. Adults lay eggs within the green pods and emerging larva, feed in large numbers of the seeds and pupate there. Adults emerge as small black weevils from the holes in the pods when dry. Those attacking cowpea at harvest and may continue as tall pests, e.g. Calosobrocus macolatus, and bro Brochidesis as atrolinetus. Calosobrochus marculatus is a brocade commonly referred to as a weevil. Its eggs are laid on bean pods in the field, and the early bean seeds may in fact contain developing larva. Infestation builds up in the store where major losses occur. This is why C. marculatus is called a field to store pest. Root knot elworms such as Melodogyne and Rotilinculus species. Affected plants have roots with irregular galls. The plants become stunted and have low yields. The affected plants should be destroyed and resistant varieties planted. A good crop rotation also helps to reduce pest population. All right, these are ways you can control these different pests and um, which might yield to increase growth. These are the different kinds of uh, pests that attack, insect pests that attack cowpea on the field. And we have those that attack them in the storage. We have the cowpeas attack them in the storage. The diseases and pest control, brown blotch, you have to use benlate at the rate of 515 gram per 10 liter of water. Two to three applications are required beginning from flowering. For good control of insect pests as well as brown blotch diseases, a mixture of benlate and the appropriate insecticide will produce a satisfactory result. Nematodes, a cowpea should be full should follow early season cereals such as maize or rice on the same land. If possible, do not grow more than two successive crops of cowpea on the same land. Also, do not grow cowpea after other crops successful in root nut nematodes such as tomatoes, kennel and leaf vegetables. You are meant to plant cowpea in areas where nematodes cannot grow, in fields that are used to cultivate crops where nematode is difficult to grow, in such as maize or rice. Okay. Do not grow more than two successful crops of cowpea on the same land. Don't grow cowpea today and grow cowpea on that same land again tomorrow. Make sure you have another crop growing before you return back to cowpea. Insects such as flower trips, pot borers, and pot sucking bugs. 
To obtain good use, foul trips and pot burrows must be controlled with any of the broad spectrum insecticides. We have the Karat and so on and so forth with Shepas. We have the Sinebush Super or Karet Super Ed. Spraying must begin from five weeks after planting or at flower initiation at seven to ten days intervals with a maximum of three or four sprayings. However, a feed infestation occurs much earlier than five weeks after planting. So, primer should be sprayed at two gram per 20 liter of water for a feed control. A feed control, not a feed. Or 40 ml per 20 liter of water of carrot to control foliage beetles or aphids. We also have rodents such as rats, which also minimize the growth of the yield of cowpea. So by keeping the plot and boundaries weed free, in addition, traps may be used if need be. All right, we talked about cowpea storage and I told you that it can be stored in steel drums and tins, which is a form of emetic storage where the storage air tight is essential for the growth and multiplication. Where the air that is essential for the growth and multiplication is limited, of uh, insect pests is limited, so the insect dies. So these are pictures, images of uh, the airtight containers which can be used. But this is a jute bag, which is the, the traditional method used to store uh, beans in the north. Okay, but this has some limited qualities which leads to growth of insect because the pore spaces are very large for hair to continue to grow into move into it for insects to grow and thrive. So any field pest that is transferred to the storage is able to grow effectively and multiply in these bags, in this type of bags, and which will lead to dam increase damage and quality of the seeds. But for these ones, these are new improved bags that have been made to reduce the growth of um cow uh, copy pest uh, storage pest so we can see we have the nylon around it inside of it the outside are the woven structures which is the woven poly polypropylene okay so this is a design this has helped to reduce damage of um cowpea by insects thereby reducing also the kind of chemicals that are required to place in them in order to lead to uh, controlling those insects so in the jute bag we can use chemicals most people use chemicals such as uh, snipers and so on and so forth to control pest growth but in this kind of bag you don't need the pest growth because already the environment is made unconducive for the pest to grow so we have a heat sealed bottom seams this area makes it very hot for the um, makes it very difficult for the insects to also have oxygen into them so this is all that we have for the cowpea production course. Okay, see you next class. Bye bye.